Happy Fragrant Friday for Raghead. Hey everybody, this has been here at That Cologne Guy coming at you with a new, ooh, Philly got it this week, review. How are you doing? I hope you are doing well. Happy Thanksgiving, uh, first and foremost, to to everyone in the U.S. and frankly, everyone in the world. As you know, in the U.S., um, Thanksgiving is one of the most favorite, if not uh, the favorite holiday of Americans, uh, especially because uh, a lot of people say they love the fact that there are the holidays, you're meeting up with family, and you don't have to stress over uh, the gifts. You just stress over uh, eating way too much. So happy Thanksgiving to you and to, to everyone uh, out there. I really appreciate all, and I will give you thanks uh, for watching my channel and supporting me over uh, the years. I really do uh, appreciate that. It means a lot to me. Now, speak, speaking of uh, meaning a lot to me. I am finally, finally getting to one of my absolute all-time favorites in my collection. I have no idea why I have not yet reviewed uh, this masterpiece. I cannot answer that question. Uh, probably just because I had so many good recommendations from you guys over the years and I just kept reviewing sample after sample after sample. So this is another one from my collection. I really did not have to do too much research for this episode and I'll explain why in a second. Uh, if you follow my channel, you know that I usually talk a lot about you know the name and and, uh, and, and uh, where it comes from and, and, and I'm going to do that uh, in a couple episodes. So here's what we're going to do. In this episode, I'm going to do my absolute best to stay contained only to this particular bottle. <laughs> uh, and I say that because it is excruciatingly difficult to talk about this fragrance without comparing it to the other formulations out there. I have the other bottle, okay? So long story short, this is the this is the quote-unquote original. I, I'm going to... The, the next three weeks basically will all be in air quotes, okay? So just so you know that. Um, this one has the label on it, and the other one is actually embossed oh. on the or printed on, I should say, uh, printed on the the bottle. And so that's how, that's one way you can tell the formulations or reformulations. So this episode, in theory, is based on the quote-unquote uh, original. Uh, the, the tobacco note is highly amped up here, but I will say I'll, I'll give you a batch code uh, number and date, and that will thoroughly confuse you even more, okay? So this is as close to original as I have. Next week will be the one that does not have the label on it, just has the writing actually on the bottle, which is commonly referred to as the 2012 reformulation. Uh, it's not that easy though. Uh, and then in two weeks, so this is episode two and two, in 204, in two weeks from now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare the two bottles and I'm going to talk in depth on the reformulations. If all of this is way too much information for you, way too geeky, all you need to know is this. People are going to talk about this fragrance now in terms of made in Italy, made in the UK, formulation, original, OG, reformulation to 2012 release. We're going to talk a lot about that in two weeks. And so what I want you to do is if I have made a misstep uh, in this episode, uh, or, or if you just simply have questions about it, please leave your comments below uh, on reformulations and years, etc. And then I will address those in two weeks. Because trust me when I say it's needed to do that. I'm not a big fan, you know, of all these kind of reformulations and stuff. I think people get a little too carried away. That said, the counter argument to that is a lot of companies, as you know, uh, put out successful releases and then they, oh yeah, they water them down quite quickly. Uh, they're making money and so the, you know, the, the notes... Uh, uh, things start getting lower quality. I don't know if it's just because of that, but that's my impression. Um, keep in mind, too, the European Commission uh, changed uh, their standards years ago, and so sometimes reformulations are because of that, uh, because they can't have animal products in them uh, along those lines. Um, I, I often wonder if maybe this one, because of the musk, maybe this one also was reformulated in 2012 simply to address that. I don't know that, uh, and maybe I will in two weeks. So this episode is going to be on the blue cap with the label on that. 
Again, if all of that is way too much for you and you're like, dude, you're into almost at the five minute mark, will you please just tell us what this is like? Yes, yes, I will. Everyone and their dog uh, has reviewed this one. And so it is high time that I did, uh, especially since it is one of my all time favorites. Um, back in the 90s, this came out in 1994. And, uh, and, you know, since then I've had about 12,312 bottles of this, and uh, it will continue in any uh, formulation. So I didn't get the parfumé. This, of course, is Dol- Dolce and Gabbana Pour Om. And what I want you to do is, you guys who have followed me over the years know that I, I do speak Spanish and I did I used to do reviews in Spanish and Portuguese. Um, and so what's funny is I still say Dolce Gabbana. So I say Dolce y Gabbana, which is E is the word for and in Spanish. Every once in a while it will slip out. So here's what I want you to do. If I, every time I say Dolce y Gabbana, uh, you can uh, take a swig of your favorite uh, beverage. Mine, of course, because I'm drinking real hard uh, today, is clearly Canadian uh, wild cherry. So as again, uh, quite a stiff drink here at that cologne guy. I, uh, I am super excited uh, to get to this finally. And as I said, I, this, one is, this one is in the same realm for me as um, Aqua di Gio. In the sense that, yes, I know it's synthetic. There are some fragrances that just simply make you obsessed with them. And you just, you know, I smelled this at a department store and I was, I, I dreamt uh, of, of this smell. I, I, I was completely addicted to it. Uh, and I went out and uh, immediately got a bottle and there was no uh, buyer's remorse whatsoever. Uh, this is a heavy hitter, my friends. You know, there are some bad ones in the 90s. There are. I mean, there are some big names out there that, that you know, may, that were popular that really probably weren't worth it. This is not one of them. This one lives up to the hype and actually I would say surpasses the hype. You know, it's kind of like in music, right? When they, some, 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 some artists and bands Bands are like the biggest selling and people say, oh, they're a seller. Well, sometimes it's not their fault that everyone likes their music. Okay. And the same thing applies to fragrances like this one. Um, yes, it got overhyped. Um, yes, everyone had it. Uh, but that, does that does that cheapen it? And the answer is no. Um, I I firmly believe that this is is uh, a a masterpiece. A- a- absolutely. Um, I, I would I would beg to differ with anyone who would disagree other than the fact that yes it is uh slightly admittedly uh synthetic so so this is a 94 uh back in the day in the 90s if you talk to anybody over what you know 35 40 uh they probably had this in their collection at least once uh, in their life, and it probably brings a great smile to them because it's just one of those fragrances that gets a lot of compliments and um uh, it rocks so, so here's the batch code. Uh, let me show you the bottle. Uh, uh, one thing I will say, uh, and I do consider it later in my uh, rating system, uh, as you can see here, I, I, I'm not a fan of the, 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 the cheap uh, label. I mean, the, the, the little sticker that they slapped on here. I got this from a department store. It was uh, uh, um, wrapped in cellophane. It was in the box. Uh, and I say that because there are a lot of fakes out there on eBay because people are frantically trying to get the original formulation and rightfully so. But unfortunately, there are a lot of uh, fakes. So uh, and if you're wondering, oh, was this one was this one bought on eBay and it was, you know, the, the sticker was cheap? No, it was not. And that's why I got it, actually. I grabbed it because because of that. Now, uh, I will say though, I have, you, you can see, I really save this juice for uh, special occasions. Uh, and yet, even after that, even after being well um, uh, kept uh, in my closet, uh, it still is uh, coming off. It's cheap. I, I, I've never liked the label and, and, and shame on them for putting a, a cheap element on such a, such a masterpiece. Uh, the rest of the model I do like. Um, and in the, uh, the uh, atomizer is fantastic, but I'm not going to give you one this time because I will be putting on the sprays at the end, actual ones. And because this one is very, very, very dear to me, I hold on to every spray. So uh, this one is um, absolutely uh, superb, actually, if you look at the ergonomics. Um, I love that about this bottle. This is another one that is just an absolute home run to spray. It holds well uh, in your hand, and I appreciate that. This is a 125 milliliter, uh, 4.2 ounce, uh, and this is an EDT. Be careful, because it does perform actually like an EDP, at least the, at least the 
original. Uh, and now you'll now know why I'm putting that in air quotes because this is a 7141 batch. The batch code is 7141. And that is, by, by the way, I need to say for the, the, uh, the, the orthodox Dolce and Gabbana wares out there, notice it's a made in Italy. And that might uh, matter. I will be talking about that in two weeks. And that puts us at the batch code is 2017, May 21st. So that's about five uh, years old. Now, why do I say that? This is a 1994. However, in 2012, they re-released it. They reformulated it. They called it fine-tuning, um, but it, it really... Uh, but like I said, I, I can't go into too much detail as far as the differences. Here's what I'm going to say, though. I thought the if it had the sticker on it, that must mean that it is the original formulation. I have since read that they did reformulate. It's my limited understanding that they did re reformulate this and kept, for a while, they kept the sticker. And then they moved to the other bottle that you'll see next week. All I can tell you is this. This, this one here smells like the original and the musk is present and the cinnamon is present and the tobacco is is amped up uh, and tune in next week uh to uh, tune in next week to see how it differs from the new formulation aha uh -huh. There you go. So uh, controversy abounds uh, when it comes to this. Whether or not it's the original, I don't know. We're going to talk about the colors of the cap, uh, all these kinds of comparisons. But the bottom line is, to me, this one is very close to the stuff, the juice I rocked uh, in uh, the 90s. Is it exact? Uh, prop apparently not, but um, I, I really don't notice uh, too much of a difference here. It still has that classic um uh, this is an aromatic fougere, so it's got it's got the the lavender and the sage, but then it's also got the cinnamon, and then it's got the musk and the tobacco coming in as a home run. Uh, this is just a, a you know phenomenal uh, fragrance, uh, especially uh, before the last round of formulations. How's that? Okay, so let's get down to the um, the nitty gritty when it comes to uh, projection, uh, sillage, and longevity. Very, very good. This could pass as an EDP for a lot of people. Uh, this this particular bottle here. Uh, this one will get me uh, six to eight, closer to eight hours on longevity. A work shift. I'm very happy with that. I really, really like how this thing holds. Uh, it, the longevity on this one is excellent uh, for an EDT. It's exactly what I'm looking for. Uh, and then pr projection, good news abounds because uh, uh, projection will be at an arm's length for the first five to six hours. Uh, and then it will settle down a little closer to the skin. Uh, but this is one that's definitely for the brash, for the confident, but n the cocky, but not the arrogant. Right? So women like confident, but not arrogant men. Now, this would be perfect for you then because uh, this one is confident, not arrogant. And then Siage coming in out of rooms, walking by people, leaving a scent trail. You absolutely uh, will get noticed with this one in the first five to six hours. Love, love, love. Really the triple crown uh, for longevity projection in Siage, isn't it? Because for an EDT, man, you can't ask too much more uh, than this. I really love that about this uh, fragrance. Um, one thing you guys mentioned in my reviews, I need to talk more about what this smells like. So I've talked to, so the note here, you can check on Fragrantica uh, on all the notes because this one has tons, this version. Uh, but I would say for me, it comes down to partly because of the notes I love, but it's, it's to me, it's, there's a distinct lavender I, I, I'm happy to report that there's a lot of neroli in this, uh, and then there's cinnamon and tobacco and tonka bean. So, I mean, come on, uh, you know, what more do you want? What I, you know what I love about this one? Right when you think it's going to turn floral and get a little too geranium, rose, kind of early 90s, uh, then it veers off into cinnamon, tonka, and... Um, uh, tobacco, excuse me. And I mean, so then it really settles in. This is a very original scent. Somebody called this on Fragrantica a Mediterranean fougere, and I certainly can't beat that. That's great. That's just a great uh, way to, to phrase this. Um, it, 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 I love the fact that it, it smells like you're walking through a, a, an Italian uh, uh, garden, 
Um, but then our backyard, right? A, a, a flower, a gar- flower bed. Um, but then right, right when you think it does, then, it, then it, like I said, then it veers into a, a tradi- traditional masculine notes of, you know, musk and tonka and tobacco. Uh, perhaps cinnamon. Uh, for me, it is. Uh, but uh, either way, uh, a highly original. And yes, I am going to say it. I'm not a fan of buzz- buzzwords, as you know. But I will say it was indeed a game changer. It was. And so, uh, you know, come on. I mean, this one, Aqua di Gio and, uh, and Issey Miyake. I mean, the, I mean, the top three of the 90s. Here's another one that you should leave then. Let me know what your uh, top three are for the 90s. How's that? They have to be 90s releases, though. Uh, they have to be. So uh, let me know uh, what your uh, three 90s uh, releases would be, even if they're not quote unquote 90s freshies, just anything in the 90s. So, um, and then you can also leave me a comment on anything you just happen to absolutely uh, love at first sniff. I mean, as soon as I, I just smelled this and I just said, yeah, I, I must. I must have this, and I mean, I, I never get tired of wearing this, um, especially because I, I do now relegate it to uh, special occasions, at least with this bottle. Uh, so, so, so let's get down to some masculine gender. Masculine and feminine, we're looking at, um, I would call this deep in the heart of masculinity. So if this were feminine and this is uh, unisex, and then this is uh, masculine over here, this is ultra uh, ultra masculine, uh, you know, Tom Selleck, uh, you know, 80s mustache, hairy chest, Magnum PI sports car. Uh, I would put this right here in the heart of masculinity, at least in terms of, of uh, uh, marketing uh, and wearability. Do I think a woman could pull this off? Not necessarily. I, I don't know that that would be tough. So I think what you're going to see is about an 85 15 split i think you'll see 85 percent of the people wearing this uh, will be men and 15 percent uh, will be women and quite frankly of that 15 percent some of them it's going to be because they like they like you know wearing it but it's also because they probably just love the fragrance so much that they want to smell it uh, on them as well because it just smells that good it's very inviting it's very addicting it's very sexy it's very classic um it really is uh, worthy of the term masterpiece so when it comes to age so here's the thing i'm going to move out of the way there because uh, the the sun is going to start creeping in that's all right you'll just see some sun on my on my forehead when it comes to age, here's the thing. On the one hand, you would think, okay, it's probably more appropriate for like bros in the 20s, but really it's going to be guys who wore it back in the 90s who just can't stop wearing it. So, okay, as far as who could wear it, I would say uh, any college and up. So I'm going to go, um, let's just, let's go with the um, first internship. So I'm going to go 22. So you just got out of college. Uh, or it's your last semester and you have that first unpaid uh, internship, you could start rocking this and then go to the happy hour with your friends. So yeah, you're over drinking age, which in this country is 21. So you let's say uh, 21 and up as far as who could wear it. In all likelihood, who's going to be wearing it will be uh, target audience here. It's going to be probably 35 and up because of uh, dudes who have want you know nostalgia, or who just have not stopped wearing it. I, I have a feeling a lot of you will say, "Yeah, my dad wears this," uh, and so I'm going to say 35 and up as far as who actually is wearing it most likely. Who could wear it? 21 and up, and um, I mean. Come on, no, no one's going to dislike this. I'm sorry, no one is going to dis- or And if they do, they just do not like fragrance on people. And there are people who are like that. That's fine. But uh, distinctly, like saying, I do not like this one, not going to see it. Highly unlikely. Uh, how's that? So uh, when it comes to event, yeah, any, any place, any time. Any place, any time. Any event, this is highly, highly, highly versatile. You can rock a t-shirt, a leather jacket, a suit, uh, you know, a sports coat, a blazer, uh, you know, your birthday suit. I don't know. You, you, you wear anything you want, okay? 
versatility is incredibly high when it comes to this fragrance yes i can do the seasons i mean yes because it's an aromatic fougere uh, fougere of course is french for fern fern like and so we're going to see spring and summer this is going to be quite popular um, that said though i could see a lot of people so if i had to guess i mean i would say this is a spring to early summer and i and if i had to guess uh, what I was doing in the late 90s, it was wearing this probably in the spring and then Aqua de Joe in the summer. Uh, then again, I've nearly never been too much of a, of a season person. This is definitely one that a guy could wear uh, 365 days a year. Uh, and so this is another perfect uh, gift for uh, Father's Day. I can see a lot of people again saying that they get this for their dad uh, for Father's Day. And um, and an outstanding uh, gift it is any formulation so that's the age that's the uh, gender that's the versatility the event um and so now let's get to in the season so now let's get to the rating <laughs> so he, this one is actually easy for me this is an easy rating because in terms of my five spray system i do give one elusive bonus spray and i have i have given it out Here's, here's, this is the embodiment of a five out of a five uh, spray f fragrance. This must be a five out of five. I don't, I'm talking this bottle, this color, okay? So again, uh, remember what I said. It's got this sticker on it. It's got the blue made in Italy. This one to me is a five out of a five spray rating. I'm even tempted to go six because I was going to say it was too synthetic, but then again, I'm a, I'd be a hypocrite because Aqua de Gio, I gave a six out of five. It's an emotional favorite of mine, um, and, and it's probably the most synthetic fragrance out there. So I'm not going to take off anything for being too synthetic, but what I will say is, I, you know, I'm definitely taking, uh, I'm not going to give a coveted TCG elusive bonus spray uh, for, for this crap. I mean, that's just, that's just rubbish. I mean, come on. You know, to, to have some... Uh, look, in fact, if you just looked at the back and the cap, right, it, it, it looks so cool. And then all of a sudden you see this garbage. Um, so shame on them. So I am definitely not going to give this one a 6 out of 5. I was tempted, but uh, nope, not going to do it. So this is, this is the mother of all 5 out of 5s. This is a masterpiece. This is, well, we're coming up on on uh, whatever formulation it's still being sold it's somehow and we're uh, almost 30 years uh, away from the original release and it's still going strong so i mean the proof is in the proverbial pudding so five out of five sprays and i get the luxury of putting them on to me right now for 1994's or original release at least dolce and gabbana Poor Ohm. Everyone and their dog has reviewed this, but it was high time. It was high time that I did too. Boom. 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 Oh, yeah. And boom. Come on. Come on. You can't have a bad day wearing this juice. You cannot do that. It's criminal. So... You know, I mean, luxury soap, five-star hotel soap, um, beautiful flowers, a floral, uh, beautiful citrus, uh, you know, the, the mandarin orange, uh, the lemon. I mean, it, it, it's a citrus. It's, it's floral. It's soapy. It's just fantastic. So five out of five, unquestionably, almost a six out of five uh, for this masterpiece. I really appreciate you sticking around. I hope you are doing well. Happy Thanksgiving for you, uh, to you. And uh, always remember, my friends, fragrance marks the celebration of today. Take care, everybody. For this it's been a lot of fun next week i'm going to review the other one uh, where it's written on the bottle as i said and then in two weeks don't forget i will review both of them i will compare really uh the different formulations that i have so please send me any questions you have on you know on this one made in italy blue cap light blue cap whatever these caps are no cap i don't know uh and i will uh do some i will delve into the research and i will let you guys know what I find. 